thank you very much for this these prestigious awards. I'm, uh, it's really an honor for me and for us um, speaking uh, on behalf of, of, um, of our department and, uh, and thanking you also on behalf of the chair, Professor Paolo Montero, and on behalf of all the colleagues who from different centers throughout Europe contributed to this important uh, achievement. Clinically speaking, the importance of, of the paper um, is uh, to show uh, robotic surgery is feasible without major complication in a patient who received a previous renal transplantation, as outcomes are overall good if you are aware of some tips and tricks you should adopt during the, during the surgery. So in terms of uh, clinical significance, um, I think the main take home message is that if clinically indicated, robotic surgery should not be avoided in these patients and can be successfully carried out. Do you mean to say, is there any work on cancer prostate and open kidney transplants? Do you mean to say that anyway, robotic surgery would be a better option for patient than open kidney transplant? if they happen to develop prostate cancer. You would mean open transplantation yes, or open, 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 open transplantation? Um, it is likely that um, robotic surgery would have less fibrosis and less adherence uh, uh, if a transplant is performed robotically, but we cannot properly answer the question up to now, as the vast majority of transplants in our series were performed using an open uh, typical surgical technique. Indeed, this, uh, this is a very relevant question, and um, in the context of this multicenter collaboration, future multicenter collaboration, we will indeed address, um, address this point in terms of impact of previous surgery on, on uh, on, on subsequent robotic prostatectomy. Currently, it remains a relevant question, but unsolved issue. In your uh, paper, you have a sample of 42 patients. Could you briefly tell us your inclusion and exclusion criteria for this study? We excluded patients with uh, very high risk prostate cancer, meaning patients with metastatic disease, and we included only patients who were diagnosed with prostate cancer after having received renal transplantations with criteria suitable for undergoing surgery. So basically localized disease. Obviously for many reasons, you avoided doing lymphadenectomy on the side of transplant. And Particularly, only I, if I recall, only four cases had disease more than Gleason 7. Am I right? A minority of the patient had, uh, had aggressive disease. Uh, this is also an important, uh, an important finding, as um, there was a previous publication of years ago suggesting there was an increased risk uh, of prostate cancer and of aggressive prostate cancer in renal transplant recipients, which appears currently not to be confirmed by recent literature. Um, specifically speaking, we also performed a systematic review on the subject and a multicenter study is ongoing showing outcomes are not worse, do not seem worse compared to people not receiving a renal transplantation. Concerning lymphadenectomy, this is also an open question um, on whether it is useful or not to perform it, as on the side of a graft is indeed challenging in terms of surgical complexity, of adherence, and also considering the risk of, um, of graft-related injuries. Tell me one thing that we already know that because of these patients are immune suppressed. Uh, they have more chances of malignancy, not prostate cancer that I know of, but skin cancers and all. Do you, it's a very small pilot study, but do you have a feeling that it could also be because of the immunosuppression? Thank you very much. This is uh, another uh, central point of, uh, of our work. In this pilot study, the sample size was uh, relatively small and it was 
surgery centered. So um, it's difficult to get a feeling, but overall we have a court with more than 150 patients. And in this case, the feeling is actually the opposite. So while some, some disease, notably skin cancers, which are the most frequent cancer in renal transplant recipients, and for example, blood cancer may have a more aggressive cause, um, in the context of prostate cancers, it seems uh, there is not more, there is not a more aggressive disease compared to people not having received a transplant. Moreover, some types, not all types, of immunosuppression drugs are also used in some phase two trials for prostate or other malignancies. Interestingly, not in this paper, but in our in our code, we perform multivariate analysis to investigate whether certain immunosuppression regimen may be associated with a negative or eventually also a protective effect. But at the moment, with more or less 200 patients, we did not find any significant correlation. At the same time, not having found any significant correlation also means there is no association with an increased risk of disease progression. Coming back to the question of lymphadenectomy, at ipsilateral you have a very strong region that you don't want to muck around the kidney's stability by disturbing the, the blood vessels and asthmosis and the ureter and the kidney itself. But would it be wiser to have look for preoperatively in aggressive disease, any positive lymph glands by preoperative assessment. There is a lot of work being done on drop-in probes. Indeed, and like indeed, that. I think this is the this is the future uh, in terms of preoperative staging. Uh, whether you should perform or not lymphadenectomy you may have in this patient different cutoff of nomograms, as kidney transplant patients uh, also have a decreased life expectancy compared to the normal population. So I think you, we can act in three directions concerning lymphadenectomy in, this, in these patients. First direction is finding normal grants adapted to this population. Second step is preoperative imaging, notably PSMA PET scan uh, may help in decision making if being positive or, or if being negative as, as they would be less likely to have than positive notes, although sensitivity is not, of course, 100%. And lastly, as you, as you mentioned, the third, the third point would be to develop gamma or beta probe as we are adopting at our institution to perhaps specifically targeting some notes which can, can also be sometimes not extremely close to the, the vascular anastomosis. And this would help in extremely decreasing the risk if you have to find a node which is three to four centimeters from a vascular anastomosis is of course different than having to to get a node which is exactly on the vascular anastomosis now my favorite question if i am the reviewer the winning point of your paper is the kind of multinational collaboration you built in order to jack up or have a sample size which would be convenient, which would be necessary to answer this question as a pilot study. Tell me, how did you go about building this collaboration? This is much beyond a social collaboration. How did you go about building? And just for new researchers, can you tell, how did you manage this collaboration? Thank you What very much. did you learn about different skill sets these people brought? In. in other words, I want you to elaborate on this because the quality work is always going to be when there is a multi-institutional or multinational collaboration. Thank you very much for the, for the question. This, um, I'm going to answer the same answer, the same answer I, I gave citing this paper uh, last year uh, at last year Congress as this paper was built within um, a EU, EUSP also funded uh, fellowship, which was actually the fellowship I, I spent in, uh, in Paris. So part of this collaboration, especially in the French side, were built during my staying in, in Paris, namely the collaboration with um, Julien Branchereau group in Nantes and with uh, Professor Tim Seed's group in uh, Hôpital Pompidou in Paris. And um, 
some of our collaborations uh, were with centers that were um, with which we were already collaborating, notably within the Young Academic Urologist Network. So in the UK, um, uh, the Guys Hospital Group, and uh, in uh, in uh, in Germany, the Martini Clinic Group, and finally, of course, there are also ongoing collaboration of our department between um, different uh, directors. With, which was the case for the you know, Fundacio Puigvert, um, which was also another, another included center. So I think it is a good example of how collaboration uh, does not need to be extremely pre-planned, but sometimes when you discuss about a clinical matter with people um, and, and you, you are getting involved in the discussion, you learn how people are doing things and if people are doing things and you put your efforts together you join efforts and you join cases to uh, arrive to a clinical a clinical point which may potentially bring benefit to patient which is in the end the, the, the goal of our our research any insights to anybody who has a situation like you have written about any tips you would like to give about surgical procedure if they happen to have a patient with renal transplant and is posted for radical prostatectomy. Indeed, this was, uh, was the goal of, um, of this surgical, uh, surgical case series and of this uh, surgical video. Indeed, the first point is port placement, especially if you have two uh, grafts instead of one. So you may think about placing the ports a bit higher compared to a normal, a normal case. And I think the second, uh, the, the second uh, very important point, excluding the case of lymphadenectomy, which we already mentioned, is uh, the ureter. So a preoperative CT scan indeed may help you in visualizing where the ureter could be. And secondly, of course, when you are uh, reaching in the phase of reaching the prostate, you have to be more careful compared to a, a, a conventional surgery, as the ureter may come may may come across the, the, the surgical field. So this part you have to pay at, pay attention, uh, not to to harm the the patient in the graft. What Equity Foundation is supporting these activities to in the interest of patient outcomes, improve techniques, support technologies, support youngsters for several years. What's your take on this award what the Goody Foundation is doing, I don't know, for seven, eight years? From your point of view, how does it help you in your career? Uh, as I said at the beginning, is indeed an, uh, an honor and and uh, I think as a as a as an honor, it 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 means receiving this award is not something that stops today, but is on the opposite a starting point, a starting point to further improve, and a starting point to develop collaboration within the context of the Vaticuti Foundation to to try to reach what is the Vaticuti Foundation objective, which is to uh, improve. Current, current practice and improve patient outcomes. So I see this, this award from, from, from my perspective not as, as, a, as an arrival point, but on the contrary, as something that motivates me to further improve this research and to further develop the, 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 this collaboration within also the Vaticuti network.